Hello again, this is Joe Roberts with a bit of a follow-up to my last video, although a lot of my videos are now follow-ups. Uh, this is on a topic which is probably of, of great use to everyone, applied frameship design, specifically moving machinery from point A to point B, revolving around this guy, the miner. A miner is an expensive little piece of machinery which requires a diamond drill, an OV scanner, and a stack of mining pipes. Please don't try using non-diamond drills and OD scanners, just please. Um, it's expensive as hell, plus it takes 27 EUT, which is not exact because it's it's only using the EU while it's functioning and it's it has this weird little downtime thing that it does, but still that's basically the full output of a geothermal and that's a pain in the... well moving on. A uh, um, miner will mine straight down from this block uh, until it runs out of mining pipe and it'll go sideways whenever it goes down a level it'll go sideways to find any valuable ores in in that 9 by 9 or the yeah, 9 by 9 square and then it'll place it into this chest which means that putting a miner right here is exactly functionally identical to mining out this entire square from surface to bedrock and taking anything that you find for yourself. You don't get all the cobble, but you also don't leave massive gaping holes in your landscape. The problem is that you have to pick up the miner and move it to the next nine spaces, and the next nine spaces, and you also have to pick up the pump and the geothermal and the battery box, and you lose any energy in those, plus you have to empty out the chest in between each move, it's a pain in the butt. And most people, they just don't go miners, because it's not worth it. But, we can do a frame ship. We can have a frame ship move all the machinery for us. Push a lever, receive new position for your miners. Pull lever nine times, reset miners, you're good to go. Now the f advantage of frameship mining over nether mining is twofold. First, it's less involved. You can run your miners and then just AFK and go do something else, um, including more nether mining, say. Uh, but second, it, um, it works on the overworld instead of the nether. And the overworld has several advantages, um, including more ores. Uh, the nether is restricted to, let me see here, diamonds, gold, iron, copper, tin, redstone, and coal. And those are extremely valuable resources. They're everything that you could ever need to build MFSUs and, L and HV solars, but if that's not necessarily your goal, like let's say you wanted to build an advanced factory and you wanted silver and nicolite, or you were playing in an, a non-SG Tekkit mod and you needed a bunch of other ores that only occur in the overworld, you can't get that through nether mining. So what do you do? You use frameship mining and then just move the frameship from point A to point B and reset your miners. Um, if you have been nether mining or if you've been playing around for a while, you probably have more resources. So I'd suggest that each one of your miners takes this configuration. You have the pump, which is right next to your geothermal. You have to have cells in the pump, but it won't use the cells when it runs into lava, instead it'll just put it directly into the geothermal. And then the miner will just stuff everything into the chest. Um, over here, an LV solar and an MFE. You can use an uh, a an MV solar if you've got resources to burn, but an LV solar is going to be just fine. It's not going to run at, at maximum speed all the time, uh, but if you AFK for a long time and let the MFE fill up, then it, it's probably going to run a full cycle. Uh, if not, then you know it's, it's not a huge tragedy. You just wait a little while. Um, you could power it with geothermals, uh, but that does take trips to the nether, things like that. It, it's it's a pain in the butt, but it works, um, which is why I also recommend this other configuration over here. It's a pump, a geothermal, a battery box with the output leading directly into the miner. Uh, this has two advantages. One, it saves on resources. It's cheaper by a full LV solar, and second, it's more space efficient. You're saving quite a few blocks, and if you're on SG Tekkit, for example, that has a frameship limit of 125 blocks, those four or eight blocks are going to make a really big difference. You could add on another miner with that. Um, pretty straightforward design, actually. Uh, um, 
it's not exactly a, a cheap thing to do. I mean, the frame motors require 11 diamonds, two for the saw, one for a diamond block, and then each one of the miners requires three diamonds, plus two stacks of iron, give or take. But you do get a ridiculous return on investment. It's, I mean, you could spend two stacks of iron and make two LV solars, and what what does that do for you? What does that do for you? Mass fabrication? You're not going to get into mass fabrication with two LV solars, but no, you do this, you run this two times, move it two times, and you have drastically returned your investment. You, you've got a huge return on investment with that, not including all of the other awesome ores that you got from it. It's pretty awesome. I mean, even if you're playing on a even if you're somewhat constrained for resources, this here can still be useful, because if, if you're playing on SG Tekkit, it's real simple. Just go to the nether, right-click on the edge of a lava lake. If you're not playing on SG Tekkit, there's even better ways of doing it, like using Buildcraft pumps next to, uh, what is it, Thermal Expansion Liquid Transposers, which allows you to use aluminum cans instead of tin cells, which saves a, a lot of resources because aluminum's cheap and useless otherwise. Um, I should probably go into the actual functionality of the miners. It's pretty straightforward. Mining pipe goes there, OV scanner goes here, diamond drill goes here, and then the miner starts coming down. Slowly, but surely. It'll go that way all the way down to bedrock, though it'll stop when it finds some resources. When you're done with the miner, and everything it digs up will automatically put it into here. When you're done with the miner, you take out the diamond drill, and the drill will retract and put all of the pipes back into this chest. And once everything is back in that chest, once the drill is fully retracted, and do not take it out early, then you can pull the lever and make it go forward. Nine times, exactly nine times, because an OV scanner will scan a 9 by 9 area, which is this block, and then four in every direction which is nine, so you move it nine spaces and, and you can set the miner up again. Um, this is also kind of, oh, there's this bug where it actually gives you more mining pipe than, than you started with, but you can abuse that. But here's a cool thing to do. Put something into that block when you're retracting the pipe, and it will automatically take out the drill, and then it will fill up the hole. And please do this, please fill up the hole, because if you don't fill up the hole, then you leave basically one by one holes down to bedrock all across your landscape, and people are not going to be pleased at you for doing that. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward, just diamond drill, mining pipe, AFK for 20 minutes, or an hour, as it were, and then just come back and move the machine and you're good to go. This is just standard applied frameship design, moving machinery from point A to point B. It's the most efficient use of it that I've found and, well, at least it's one that doesn't leave gaping holes.